welcome to Everyday Law, the show that demystifies the law for you and your family. I'm your host, Attorney Robert Monahan, and I have the great pleasure today of being here with State Senator Terry Link. Pleasure being here with you, Ben. Thanks for coming to the show, Senator Link. Enjoy it. I did not know, and I just found out, that you had your own TV show in, uh, when you were sent away. Uh, well, uh, yeah, well, still, was, you don't still have it. No, I don't. We stopped it probably 10 years ago or so, but we had it at the beginning of my career, and uh, it was a way of reaching out. Same thing what you're doing. We reached out to people. I had different guests on there that were more or less related to things that were going on, not only in Lake County, but going on with state government and stuff like that. That's so, so outstanding. It, it, it made it very interesting, and people enjoyed it. And again, this is Terry Link, Senator Terry Link, and it was called Your Link to, to Springfield, Springfield, right? right yeah, yeah, that's outstanding. Um, just can we talk about it a little bit? Because Whatever you want to. What was the most interesting guest that you had on? Oh, we had a lot, think, lot yeah, of interesting, sure. you know. I, 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 hard to pick? It, well, it is hard to pick, but we had the controversy of the tollway going on at one time, and I had the executive director, uh, uh, Mr. Brown, on there at the time. And uh, it was very interesting. I think people realized a little bit more, and I realized a little bit more of actually what was going on at the tollway mm -hmm. at that time that you didn't realize. But I had a lot of interesting guests through the years, you it's know. It's fun. I, when I have someone on, I always learn something. And I feel like when I learn something, I hope that I've helped other people learn something, correct, too. Correct, correct. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to, part of the show today is going to be introducing you. I mean, I think you're well known already. But I hope so. <laughs> introducing maybe little things about your background that maybe not everybody knows. Do we, can I have a disclaimer on sure, some of those things Go in ahead. my background? You know, <laughs> Anytime. You know, jump right in. Statue of limitations <laughs> is wore out on them, I hope. <laughs> and then we'll talk about the latest legislative session a little bit yeah. and some important you know, um, uh, bills that were passed at the latest legislative session. We'll maybe talk a little bit about um, the technical work that you do in the Senate, okay. okay, and how that works. And finally, wrapping up with you know your relationship with Obama, that's very interesting. And I think everyone knows that too, but we can delve into it a little bit. And then anything really you'd like to add to that, okay? Well, I think you've covered all that's my life now. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> that's right. I was going when we started. I think I said this is going to be an episode of This Is, this is your, your Life. life. <laughs> this is your life, like that old show. But I knew you grew up in North Chicago. Correct. And before we started rolling, I was saying that I grew up in Waukegan. When I grew up in Waukegan, it was just a great place to grow up. Um, I rode my Not bike. as nice as North Chicago, <laughs> but nice we'll, we'll North say Chicago. that. You know? <laughs> tell, me, tell me about what it was like there. It was, it was great. You know, it, it was a community back then, and I, and I still believe it's a community. But what it was is that everybody watched out for everybody. I used to joke I was the youngest of four in my family. And we lived on the far west side, and I would ride my bike or walk to play ball at Foss Park, which yeah. is far east as you can. It was right on the lake. And I might have gotten in a little mischief. Uh, you know, I, like you I said, statute there, yeah. limitations <laughs> as well. But by the time I got home, my mother knew about it. <laughs> well, we had no cell phones back then in those days. We had, you know, tin cans, right, as right, I joke the, about. The, the path of one you mom know, to another mom to another And that's another what it got. Right down it. the line. And, and, and my mother actually knew the facts. So I knew she knew what was going on. So you, you wonder Someone how. Someone was keeping an eye yeah, on you. Right. Yeah. And, and yeah. I said, that's where, you know, as a little kid, you were upset about it. But you think about it as you get older. How grateful I was that there were people watching out for me and watching out for my family, watching out for everybody, and, and it made it a community that you felt Boy, warm nice? and fuzzy. Nice. And, and yeah. I think people, you know, we've got to get back to that I in really society. That. We've yeah. got to get to know who our neighbors are. Yeah. We've got to get to know who people are and what they think that we are a community no matter where you live. That's at. nice. Can I tell you a story? Sure. I lived in New York City after law school. I lived there for nine years and I met my wife there and, my, and we had two of my children there. I have, I have three now. And um, while I lived out there, 9-11 happened. Mm -hmm. And I lived in Manhattan. And the first few years in Manhattan, you know, New York is different than the Midwest. And I, I always said that I should live abroad for a year to find out what it's like to live somewhere outside of the United States. Well, New York was like living abroad for me because <laughs> it's very different, uh, very fast-paced, sharp elbows, a little bit harder, a little bit meaner, more crowded. And um, after 9-11, though, you know, there were flags everywhere right. in, in Manhattan, and people were a little slower and a little gentler, and it felt much more like a little community than any time I'd ever been there. 
And when I started thinking about it, I was like, wow, this really reminds me of home. Yeah. You know, being in New York after 9-11 reminded me of, of the Midwest because it was just cozier, like you're saying, more patriotic. You got the feeling that people were looking out for each other. And I was like, at that point, I, I started really thinking about telling my wife, you know, at some point we should move back to Lake County and, uh, and raise our kids there. Because this reminds me of what it's like to live in Lake County. I mean, I grew up in Waukegan. Yeah. I grew up well, not too far from North Chicago. You know, it's like I say, it's like a, in the General Assembly or in Congress, you can, you can disagree, but you don't have to be disagreeable. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's what I think we're missing in everything that we do in life. It's sad. It's sad. Uh, the bipartisanship is, is uh, I, I, we live, I think there's a Chinese saying that's, may you live in interesting times. Yeah. And that's, that's I don't think it's a saying, I think it's a curse. Well, you know, I have to, you know, I know that this is going off subject matter, but what happened in Springfield this last session was great because there was a lot of bipartisanship. Uh, some of the major legislation that we passed, passed on bipartisan votes. That's what it should be about. Mm -hmm. Working together. If, um, if only uh, we regarded ourselves as Americans first more and uh, members of the same community first, right. um, it'd be easier. Things would be easier. And, and we look at things different. You know, you and I may differ on a particular subject matter, but doesn't mean that there's not common ground for mm -hmm. all of us. And whatever type of legislation that is passed has common ground for somebody. That's interesting. Well, we'll get to the, le le the legislative session just a little bit, because okay. um, you have an interesting history. Oh, I mean, I, I mean not, <laughs> not just the fact that we grew up in North Chicago and um, your parents were working people. Right. Did you always want to go into politics and, and kind of serve your community, or did you? It, it, how did it, it come about? It, it was it was something that was always in my mind. Okay. You know, it was something that intrigued me. Uh, I felt that I could do you know, something to make life better for people. Um, I've been very fortunate in my life. I, I had a work and struggle for everything that I have today. Nothing was given to me sure, in you, any you regard. you started caddying very young. Oh, the, yeah. I, from I, North I Chicago, caddied. you went to kind of Lake Bluff and Lake Forest you know, to do yeah, the caddying and it, learn it, the game it, of golf. Is that is that how you learned golf? That's where I yeah. learned, yeah, because yeah. we couldn't afford it, sure. you know, to do anything like sure. that. So, I mean, you, you learn what it's like to, to you know, like I said, we were not a rich family by any means, but I didn't realize that until I was growing up because everybody else in the neighborhood was in the same boat as we were. So you, you, you got together and you, you, your life was better because of it. Yeah. So, I mean, I struggled, I worked hard, and, but I always wanted to make a difference in, in life. And I felt that going into the political world, I could make that difference in. I've been very fortunate about it. Was your first kind of political uh, mentorship Hubs, Hub Stern and Grace Mary Stern? Well, or was that, was they, they were a them? little bit later, okay. but they, they were definitely uh, people that I admired and I worked very closely. I, I worked in Grace Mary's office when she got elected county just clerk. So, just so people know, uh, Hub Stern and Grace Mary Stern, they were a Highland Park couple, is that right? And he was the chairman of the Democratic Party, and she became the county clerk. Right, and which was unusual. She was the oh, first, it the was first Democratic, very unusual. The first Democratic county clerk for many, for, I mean, for 100 years or something. Yeah, if, if, and, if, and I mean, she did it, uh, let's put it this way, myself, one other gentleman came in with her. So there was three of us. We were the only three Democrats in the <laughs> building. There was no doubt about that. And we weren't greeted with warm arms in, in I've plain heard, words. I've heard about that, yeah. Yes, yeah. It, it, it got very Because you need things. You need things from, uh, uh, from the people that run the courthouse. That's right. where your office is. It's right. in the courthouse. And, uh, and you need things from the people that run the courthouse. And um, if they're not on your team, you might not get everything you want. All that's the time. that's very true. <laughs> yes, and uh, yeah, like I said, you, you had to conquer that. But I think that you know that makes you tougher. It mm. makes you focus a lot more mm. on wanting to get things done. Did you run her elections, Grace Mary Stern's elections? No, I worked on her first election. Okay. I was very close to Hub at that time. Mm. Matter of fact, Hub was the chairman of the Democratic Party in Lake County, mm. and I was the secretary of the Central Committee mm. at that time. And it was kind of ironic. We weren't what you would call a powerhouse at those days. I mean, people were satisfied if you got 38% of the vote. 
But I always remember the night Grace Mary got elected in 1970. I was in a basement because that's where the tallying yeah, of the ballots yeah, yeah, was. Yeah. And in those days, it was in a computer room, which was probably the size of uh, a gymnasium yeah. these days. You know, the air temperature had to be a certain control. And we're there all night, and she won by a very, very narrow margin. Uh -huh. And when I came back upstairs, realized it was daylight again. <laughs> and so that's how long we were down there. But it, it was it was an interesting. And like I said, then I came to work for her. Yeah, in the after courthouse. That, in the courthouse at that, and that was pretty much you know extension of what I wanted to do. And then it continued on from there. My friend Ralph Sahork said she was a great communicator, oh. a real powerhouse. That she had her own column that ran in the Pioneer Press and so on. That was kind of like politics in Lake County and what you might hear in the elevator and so on. And, and he really admired her work and, 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 and kind of how dynamic she was. You know, one of the lessons I learned in my political career is to educate myself from other people that were successful. And Grace Mary was one of those that I listened to. And one of the things she did that I admired the most, all of us make mistakes. But a lot of people, you know, in the political world do not ever want to admit they made a mistake because that would put a dent in their right. armor. Right. She taught me the lesson, if you make a mistake, stand up, admit you make the mistake, and people will respect you more for it. Mm. And she did that. It worked. And people are forgiving if you tell the truth. And so... She taught me that. I worked for the late Alan Dixon sure. and the late Mike Hollett. They taught me different things. And you, if you listen and you try to incorporate a lot of that stuff into the way that you react to things, it makes you a stronger person. Right, right. And, and so Grace Mary was a mentor in a lot of ways to me. And ironically, when I I got a when I ran for Senate the first time, she didn't. Ninety seven. Ninety six. Yeah. Oh, I got. I, sw I'm sorry, I was sworn in in ninety seven. But when I ran, she didn't think I could win, right? <laughs> and she said, "I'll eat my hat if you win." <laughs> and I said, "Okay." So I was on. She did a cable show she also did? at oh, the end there. And unfortunately, I did her last <laughs> program that she ever did because she was dying of cancer oh, okay. at that time and that we didn't realize it but anyway I did her last show and on the show she did a hat and she started <laughs> eating the hat and I says you know at least you paid off the bet that is funny that is funny so you ran for Senate in 96 against David Barkhausen no not no, against it David it David, David Barkhausen, Barkhausen stepped down oh he did and I ran I against that. a state rep called Thomas Lackner who oh, was I didn't who know was that. a one-term okay. state rep oh and you know, timing is everything. Wait, how, can you explain that a little bit? Because I had in my note that you ran against David Barkhausen. No, no, David Barkhausen. That's Bar just a mistake I made. David I made Bar a mistake. I, yeah, I'll own up, yeah. We'll write that one yeah. down, you know. <laughs> but David Barkhausen was my predecessor. Okay, okay. But he decided not to run for re-election. Oh, I did not know that. And, you know, when I announced, I had presumed I was going sure, to be running sure. against him. But then uh, Thomas Lackner ran. Okay. He was a state rep for half of the district. And the ironic part of that is two years earlier, I had considered running for state rep. Yeah. N not that I ever really wanted to, but somebody sat down with me and we were talking about it. And they said, do you really want to do it? And I said, no. <laughs> so I didn't run. And that was uh, 94 was the landslide of the nationally oh, yes. of There's the, uh, the, the Greenrich kind of guy. Yeah, right? it the was Gingrich the guys. landslide in there. So I would have been beat by Lackner. Mm. Two years later, I run for the Senate, so and, I beat, and I beat so him. It's so interesting. It's all it? timing. Yes, we had, you know, Miles Davis said, timing is in everything. It's the only thing. It's the only and thing. And we'll be right back, and we're going to talk a little bit more about your history. Okay. We haven't quite finished it yet. <laughs> but, um, and then we're going to move on to the latest legislative session. Okay. Right. We'll be right back. Thank you. Hi, and welcome back to Everyday Law, the show that gives you all the law you need to know. Again, I'm here with Senator Terry Link. Uh, again, I'm Bob Monahan, your host, but I'm here with Senator Terry Link. And again, thank you for coming, Senator. It's, it's a pleasure. It's great to have you here. It, it's a really interesting conversation. I wanted to round out your senatorial career by talking a little bit about um, what you've done as a senator. When I, when I was uh, doing my radio show before I was on TV, 
I talked to someone at the Veterans Assistance Commission, um, and we were talking to every, everything they were doing. And at the time, you were helping with the bill. I, I can't remember the details. It now. was a property tax relief bill for those that are were injured yes. in combat, yes. in, in active combat. That was the one. And we were able to get it passed so that these veterans could see a relief in their property tax. That's and, outstanding. And I, you know, I, I just think it's something that you know made me very proud to be able to do. But it also made me feel better that we had too often only think of veterans on Veterans Day mm -hmm. or we only think of those that lost their lives on Memorial Day instead of guess what there's 365 days that these veterans should be respected and honored for putting not only their life on their line their families lives yeah. have changed because of it so this was a little thing that I thought we could do for sure. him. Sure, his name was Michael Peck. I Michael remember Peck, yes. Remember him? Worked, He's retired now. Worked I think. very closely with Michael. Yeah. Michael Peck told me at the time that for your support of the elderly and your support of veterans, that you were Lake County's Joe Biden, that 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 you were their senator. You know that, uh, and um, so I know you you've supported the veterans in that way. Um, another bill I think you're proud of and that you you you're responsible for is the Smoke Free Smoke Free I, Act. I, I, is I what always. It's called. Smoke-free Illinois. Smoke I, Illinois. I, I always jokingly say that I want that on my tombstone, <laughs> but not for a little while yet. You know, I'd like to wait. You know, but it, it was something to where, and, and I give credit where credits due. I was able to pass the bill, but there was a, a House of Representative individual who introduced the bill 20 years prior to me. Oh. So it wasn't like I just thought of this one day and introduced it. I picked it up, and, it, and the problem it was always in the Senate. So at that time, uh, the president of the Senate was Emil Jones, who was a smoker. <laughs> and so you know, it was uh, you know, okay, I got to convince this guy that you know I really want to get this done. So finally, one day, he said to me, "Just do the bill," you know, and I said, "Okay." <laughs> so I, I did the bill, and it was it was sent to the executive committee, where the president sits there and a the minority leader sits on okay. those. Plus, you know, all the leadership sits on uh, those committees. And I went there, and to make a long story short, I passed it out of there. And, you know. And once the, it passes the Senate, the, then it goes to the House? Right. Then okay. I passed out exec pa and took it on the Senate floor. And I'll tell you a little inside story yeah. on that. We were working on how to negotiate the bill, how to, you know, get votes on it, and we're going. And I had made a commitment that I would not run the bill until I had 30 votes. Okay. Okay. Sure. So we're in my office one day. Just, just I, so everybody knows, the Senate has 59 And we need 30, 30, 39, 30 right. to pass it. Right. So I'm in, the, in my office with the advocates and everybody in my office, and we only had 27 solid votes. So I said, you know, one of, uh, now President John Cullerton was my co-sponsor of the bill, oh, okay. said to me, he said, let's just do it. We could put it on postponed consideration. I said, oh, why not? So I walk out to the Senate floor, and, you know, they call bills in particular yeah. order, and it came up to me, and I stood up. And you could see the blood go out of the faces of some people when I stood <laughs> out because they figured, okay, he's got the 30 votes. So I get up there, I introduce it, debate it, and all of that. To make a long story short, we ended up with 34 votes. <laughs> we passed a bill, and I said those other seven people thought that they <laughs> were not the ones, and we ended up having a 30 votes, so they didn't want to be left out. So we passed it. It then passed the House of Representatives and became law. And I think that the thing that I get about this is that we've saved generations of lives. Mm. And when we did the bill signing, I had my oldest grandson, who is now going to be 13 years old, and he was a little, he was like six months old at the okay. time, and I held him in my arms and I said, here's the reason that I did this bill, that he should not ever have to live through what I lived through in my life of secondhand smoke. Mm -hmm. And I think it's something that not only is going to save money for those in the state of Illinois, it, it, it's just going to save lives and save hopefully lives people. Oh, yeah. God, yes. And, yeah. you know, when, when I was growing up, everybody smoked. Sure. I never smoked a day in my life, sure. I could say that. But, you know, everybody else, my family members smoked. Smoking was, a, you know, if you came into a table like this, you saw a little cigarette container in here sure. with cigarettes. So, I mean, I, I think we have changed that. 
And it's a thing that, you know, that's probably the most important bill I've ever done or ever will do in my life. And uh, I, uh, I talked to an assistant of yours who told me that bars would call your office, that the guys oh. in the bars would call your office and they'd pass the phone down, you know, and one guy would it, yell it, at it, another guy. Let's put it this way. It was <laughs> a lot of opposition. There, I had many pictures of me in bars, <laughs> but it used to have a red line through that picture in there. And I, I said, you know, thank goodness I don't drink because I probably would have had to go to Havana to get a drink, you know. I couldn't have gone anywhere else in the state of Illinois. But today, you talk to a lot of those same bar owners, and they say thank you. They appreciate it. They act, they're not exposed to the second. Well, their their bartenders aren't. The people that work there, they they don't have to repaint their bar every year That's because really of the because of, of the, the smoke the and all yeah, that. Yeah. And you know what? They're not losing their business that they saw anymore. Okay. Well, look. Let's. Is there any other bill that is really important before we get on to the most recent legislative session? Oh, well, there's a lot there's of a lot, I mean, a lot of them at, that I've done in my career, that, it's, uh, you know. So. But I mean, I think you know when we talk about that, that one stands out yeah, more than anybody. Sure. Okay. Well, in the most recent legislative session, there were I think four, four issues that were important um, that I wanted to talk to you about, and the first one is uh, legalizing marijuana. Um, I'd read earlier that that was something you were cautious about. I was very cautious about that because, you know, now I was a deciding vote on medical marijuana. Okay. I was the 30th vote on it. And, and I did that because, first of all, my wife has MS. Okay. I had a lot of other people that have medical health problems that this could help them. And I figured, you know what, if something like this can help them, doctors say it could help them, why not? Okay. So when we came to the idea of recreational marijuana, I had a little bit of apprehension because did we really want to do this? Are we doing it just for the money or are we doing it for a lot of reasons? And so when I sat down and they altered things because of the original bill had allowed people to have five plants okay. in their home. Okay. And I said, I can't sign off on that. I yeah. cannot. And I fought that and fought that. And they took that out of there. And, and I think that was extremely important. And I said, and on top of it, if we're trying to raise money, why are we letting people, you know, raise their own plants, you know, <laughs> and we're never selling anything. You can't tax that. that. And right, we won't yeah. sell it. Yeah. So anyway, you know, that got taken out. And the other thing is, I was worried about now if you're driving down the street yes. and you had a few yes. martinis, yes. you know, yes. sure. the police could stop sure. you and it could sure. give you a breathalyzer. Yes. So I said, we have to do something to make sure that we can test Safety. these individuals yeah. that are impaired by marijuana. That's very interesting. So there is testing out there. Okay. Now, for a good lawyer, you're going to have to have it court tested yes. first. But, I mean, they have it out there. And I know one of our local people, Abbott Laboratories, has the thing to where it's like a swab they can put in your mouth and they can test you as that. So, I mean, those are the kind of things that I had to have in the bill before I could vote for That's it. Really and it. And it was there. Because, yeah, is it going on? Without a doubt it's going on. You know, I, I want to put the drug dealers out of business. I, I want to put illegal stuff out of business. But, you know, I want to make sure that it's done correctly. You know, th it's really interesting. When I was talking... You know Terry Brady. Yes, He's very a retired well. judge. And we were talking about some of these issues. Because I was telling him I didn't know whether we should talk about these things or not. And, you know, I think it's great that you're, 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 you're doing a great service to me and the public by explaining these things. But we were talking about the difference between what's right, what is right, and what should be legal. And there are many things that, that aren't exactly right, but that doesn't necessarily mean they should be illegal. It's not right to drink away your family's, you know, your salary every Friday night and go home and, you know, go to bed. But it's but, legal to do that. But, you know, the saddest part of that is, is you know, we have a lot of programs. You know, I serve on the CASAS board. You do? Yeah, you okay. know, sure. And we have programs to help people with addiction types of problems. It could be drinking, drugs, gambling, whatever, you know. But the point is we're never going to eliminate it. That's interesting. And it, the saddest part of that is, so we can't jeopardize all of our communities 
by doing it for the, um, you know, it's, it's like interesting. I, regulate it's, it and make make it legal and, and regulate and it. Regulate it and also make it very restrictive, yeah. you know, so that if a person, you know, like you have it here, if if your cousin Charlie is a habitual gambler and he goes into the casino every day and he's losing his money, he's losing his house, he says, you can report him today. They can ban him from there mm. and never is allowed to step right. in a casino right. in the state of Illinois again. And the point is that's the same thing we can do with you know, marijuana, we can do it with uh, alcohol. We've got to do stuff, but we can't just generally paint a brush over and say very we're not going to do it because of this. Do you know that the other issue we were talking about when I was talking with Judge Brady was that so often in public issues are talked about as black and white. Which we know they're not. And you're occupying and legislating this grayer area between the black and white positions. Like prohibition. Didn't work 20s, too well. Didn't work too well. It caused all kinds of problems because people wanted to drink alcohol as a social lubricant, mm -hmm. to take their cares away, to go to bed, whatever it may be. But when it was made illegal by a certain kind of moral authority that was... Uh, you know, the temperance movement or whatever it was, it caused all kinds of problems with the infiltration of, of uh, organized crime and so on that people didn't anticipate. And it's very hard to know how, so you're a legislator and you're dealing with these moral kind of uh, legal issues all the time and trying to occupy the gray space between a black and white you know, between what the public, I think, often perceives as black and white positions. And I mean, you, you emphasized it greatly when you said about prohibition. All we did is make illegal people very rich. Yes, and, that's really rich. And you, it, Ridiculous, you, right? Yeah. Right, and you've got people that today are living that benefited from their great-grandfather making money through those days and, and doing it. The Kennedys. That. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, these are sad part of uh, scenarios of like that. Very sad. And, but at that time, that was what was going That's on. Happened. So today, I'd rather have make government rich. I'm being honest with you because no. if we get rich, we benefit a lot of people. You know how to direct the money. You, you're, I mean, yeah, there's, I mean, and Illinois could use the help. You know, I don't know. I mean, just to say I, that. It, let's put it this way. Every state could use some help. Every state could use the help right now. <laughs> we, it's we, very interesting. So... I have different opinions about legalizing marijuana. It's, to me, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's scary to think about a little bit because it's been so different growing up that it, it was something that, that you, you just you, you could but go I, to jail for. But I guarantee you that people you know oh, yeah. and I oh, know absolutely. use marijuana. Absolutely. Boy, and they didn't know what was in it. They didn't know how strong it really was. That's a great point. Here's we're controlling it That's a little a bit point. more. Yeah. What they were getting on that street corner may not have been the one. That, that's what got a lot of people really interested in trouble. We have to take a break right now. Sure. Uh, but we'll be back to talk about the other three issues, okay? And they are abortion, taxes, and the casinos. I like all the easy <laughs> questions. <laughs> we'll be right back, okay? We're just going to take a break.